Okay, I'm Greta Jensen. I'm a jack of all trades and master of none. Um, I've worked with appropriate technology uh, since the 1980s, mainly in India. And um, I'll tell you about a project that I um, feel particularly proud to have been involved with, which was um, the introduction to Tibetan refugee settlements in India of the Twin Pit Poor Flush composting toilet. Ah, is that the Sulab toilet, same design? The, it's, it, Sulab is an organisation that has used many different designs. Okay. This particular one is one that Sulab uses. Okay, I've seen it on their website. They're, yeah. yeah. Okay, so. um, but this particular design is built of ferrocement components, and the technology was developed in... Um, the Centre for Scientific Research in Oroville in Tamil Nadu and um, we trained um, one particular Tibetan who spoke no English and had never been, never learned to read or write. Very simple gentleman and he took the technology back to the settlement where he lived in Karnataka in India. And um, Southern he, refugees, basically. Yes. I used to know Gilak Rinpoche in uh, Ann Arbor, and he spent some time in the Southern I'm refugee Gilak camps. From, oh, yes, you do? Yes, ah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. Very interesting. Yeah. Anyway, um, he set up a building center based on the Oroville model, mm -hmm. um, where he was doing stabilized mud block and ferro cement components. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that he was particularly successful with was the Twin Pit Poor Flush Composting Toilets. Mm -hmm. um, and um, first we used to give a grant to people who wanted to introduce them to their housing complexes. Mm -hmm. And um, I went back after 10 years expecting to see nothing because a lot of development projects um, don't always, they're not always terribly sustainable yes. and I visited him in January and he said he had a waiting list of local people waiting to buy twin <laughs> or flush composting <laughs> toilet components. That's what you want to hear, fantastic. So I just wanted to tell you about how thrilled I am. That's wonderful. And how amazing this, this guy is and right. how we need to acknowledge more the expertise that exists in the South mm -hmm. rather than assuming that all the expertise um, in various technologies is developed here mm -hmm. in the north. So, um, what's his name? How would we find him? His name is Dunduk Dorje. Uh -huh. And, um, as I say, he just is a very simple man. He mm -hmm. lost his wife in the middle of the whole project, but still carried on. Mm -hmm. um, and I've just kept in touch with him uh -huh. all these years. And and well, the, the sort of actual pitch, right, is that they're basically talking about using ICT in a smart way mm. or use pictures of projects instead of written documentation so you, you can work in areas where it's just too expensive to do written reporting. So you go there with a camera phone, you take a bunch of pictures, you shoot some video, you have the celebration when the well goes into operation. Mm. Um, and those kind of factors, like that's the first time I've heard somebody say, ah, but that won't work because of the governance issues. Yeah. So that's very interesting in its own right. Mm. Unfortunately. Well, but um, another innovation that I saw that he just um, d completed when I saw him in January mm -hmm. was that he had installed, um, made a ferrous cement again, yep. a water harvesting system that took water from the roof of the workshop. Ah. And he was using it first for the curing ponds for the ferrous cement. Yep. And then taking it into, they, they have a windmill which raises water, which they use. Yes. And he actually takes it into um, a series of gullies so that around the windmill. Okay. So that it goes straight back to recharging the water table. Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. filtered by the rocks. Absolutely. You know? So you just dump it into the place your well is, yeah. and it's just, it's just, I mean, it's particulate stuff rather than very elegant. Yeah. You and this is all something he's come up with. Yeah. And was he a lama or a monk or he's no, just an ordinary, ordinary Tibetan guy? Very poor right. Tibetan. What do you think of ferro cement as a technology? I, met, I want to say uh, not Garnet, Granite, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. He's one of the big ferro cement activists, runs ferrocement.org. Uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to remember his name. No, it's I'm completely sorry. something in my mind. Anyway, it, it sounds like Granite but it's not and we, we had a long conversation with him about ferrous cement as a sort of basic technology. What, what do you think of that? Um, 
I have issues with it around the use of cement, but I mean okay. it does reduce the amount of cement that's used. Yeah, it does. I also um, think you do have to know what you're doing. But okay. on the other, having said that, this guy has been so inventive with Ferris. He makes window frames, door frames, doors, um, sinks. You name it, he wow. can make it in ferrous cement. And so he's understood the, the, both the, the possibilities and the challenges of working with the material. So it seems like something where if you've got sort of an intelligent crafter approach mm. to it, it actually gives you a lot of utility value? Definitely. Okay. Because I'm very interested in, like, in the open source software world, if you had a computer and you had some programming skill, you could innovate. And if you didn't have programming skill, you could get it by messing around for four or five years. I mean, it was, you know, all programmers were self-educated. In university, for example, first year, the people who could program already were all self-educated programmers. They didn't learn it in school. You just hacked your way to competence. And if you had the gene, you did it. Um, and I'm very interested outside a software of technologies which enable people who have the gene or have the knack to do this. And is, I'm very interested in this notion that ferro cement might be one of those technologies. That once you master ferro cement, then you're bound only by imagination in a way that's not true, for example, with clay, where you're actually pretty limited because of the material. That's an interesting thought. I, I, I wouldn't know how to answer that because I only know one person. Yeah. Of all the people that were trained, um, he was the outstanding one. So he's a ferro cement guru. Oh, ferro cement guru. Ferro cement guru. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I even, uh, we, we invited the Dalai Lama to um, visit the um, building center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had the honor of explaining to His Holiness the Dalai Lama the functioning of the twin pit poor flush composting <laughs> toilet. Well, that's very auspicious, yeah. Has it been appropriately blessed? Oh, I think so. <laughs> that is excellent. Yeah. Anyway. Fantastic. Well, tell me who you are again. I'm Greta Jensen, and I'm an independent consultant, jack of all trades and master of none. Well, thank you so much for telling me your story.